Christmas Eve. And I'm having lunch with your uh, wife next Friday. Are you so fucking real? I get a double dose. Are you so serious? Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. She reached out to me on uh, Monday, and I wrote her back right away, and I said, yeah, let's do it. So that's... No, she's like, you're so busy, I'm just jump on it. Yeah, that's so fucking cool. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Well, she's a real sweetie. Yeah, and the last time we ran into each other, I think, was when I was still working, like, weekends at Silo, and okay. so we talked okay. for a long time. Okay. She was like, we should do something um, together. Yeah. Like, I love what you do, you know? And so, anyway, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But, yeah, she's great. Like you. That's so. awesome. Yes, yeah, so either way, I figure friends. That makes me super happy. Good. Yeah, she's um, she's very cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's super cool. No, she's awesome, and I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that, like, as something I've come to understand better over the last, I don't know, couple months. Mm -hmm. She's pretty cool. Well, I like um, being friends with other powerful women. That's, like, very important to me. And even, like, you know, with the projects that I'm getting chosen for now, um, like with HCA, for example, I mean, I know they said besides the merit of your work, uh, we really like the fact that you're, like, a 30-year-old woman. And same with Gresham. I mean, you know, they have a lot of strong women in leadership roles, and uh, I think it's really cool. I mean, I have lots of guy friends, obviously, work with lots of men, love men, but I think it's important for women to stick together, too. I, I think it's a thousand percent important for yeah. women to stick together. Totally. Yeah. I mean, who's going to understand? Like right. another woman, right? Yeah. Not me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like... You can empathize, but... Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I'm not going to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not really. Totally. You know? But I'll listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. listen. I'll listen. Yeah, well, it's it's interesting being a woman in the South as well, not being a Southerner. So, you know yeah. what I mean? So I'm always looking either for, like, Southern women to give me insights into the culture here yeah. or um, for other people who can, like, kind of give me sort of what I'm missing from being, you know, in my hometown in Chicago. Yeah, yep, yep. Do, you, know, you know what I, I do. mean. I do. Yeah, because you didn't grow up here either. I didn't, um, yeah, I didn't. I spent, I spent enough time in the South that I, I feel like by the time I got here, I kind of got it, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of understood. So I haven't been surprised by the Southern tendencies, if you will, um, but, but it's different, you know, it's different yeah. than the North, there's no question about it. Well, I think it's one of the reasons I've been successful here is because, like, the way I communicate is so different. Like, I was just listening to this podcast before I came to meet you today. It's one of my favorite psychology podcasts. Okay. And not, like, wild about the interviewer, but he has great guests. And yeah. it was all about uh, communication and conflict resolution, which I'm really interested in. And he was going through the different communication styles, and I thought... Yeah, I'm, like, very direct. Yeah. And, I, you know, and I'm, yeah, like, I'm yeah, no yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And I've always just been like that. I think it's why I'm good at acting. Like, they say yeah. the best actors are, like, real, you know? And yeah. So, but here it's, like, they didn't know what to do with it at first. But then it ended up working out. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Right. You just ask for what you want. And I think, I think Nashville in particular is getting more and more, um, more diverse in terms of the people who are in power who are here. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of people from L.A. that are moving here. I mean, there's a drove of people from Chicago. Are you seeing that? Are you feeling that? Like, many, many more Chicagoans, like, in I, Nashville? Yes. Because I'm, I'm hearing that, and I also know of a couple folks just from the tech industry, you know, who have moved here from Chicago and are, like, super excited about being here. I do, and I also travel a lot, and I talk to you. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I also talked to you. Oh. Would you mind closing the curtain? Not at all. Thank, Thank you. you. I also talk to my Lyft drivers a lot, and they tell me that boatloads of people are moving in from Chicago, which I think is really interesting. I, I, I do too. On a day like today, where it's like negative twenty, they're like colder than the Arctic Circle. I can certainly understand. Yeah, I mean, look, I wouldn't trade growing up in New York for anything, but you know, America's in a really funny place economically right now. You know what I mean? Like, there aren't that many places where where it's optimal to be a creative. Yes. It, oh, yeah. It, like, if you disagree, I'd love to hear that. But, like, from, like from what I... Just from my experience, when I was doing Moon Toast, and I was, you know, I spent a lot of time in Boston and a lot of time in San Francisco and a fair amount of time in New York and then some time in cities like Chicago because they have a lot of agencies in Chicago. 
Um, Chicago wasn't wasn't terrible, but I mean, San Francisco was off the cha- off the charts bad. Like mm-hmm. just in terms of like the economic disparities. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know that that sort of spilled into the street in the form of like mental health state of emergency. You know, just unattended to you know communities of people that are just not being cared for. It's just like it's 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 kind of nuts. And I and I, I just I can't help but see the connection between that and the economic disparities, you know? And I feel like here, while yes, we're tracking the fact that the cost of living is going up and it's not that easy to get around and like I, I definitely see that, mm-hmm. but um there are still places to live. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you have a car, mm-hmm. you can still get a house in Donaldson for $200,000, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's still, and that's only 15 minutes outside of downtown. Like, there's still affordable neighborhoods that are really pretty pretty cool to live in. Oh, sure. I mean, I live in the city's only artist lofts, and I mean, I always think that is so, like, ingenious. I mean, and it was interesting because actually I... Um, I ended up connecting at the end of last year with um, the property management company that runs my building, Freeman Web, which they're huge, mm-hmm. and they're big. they were amazing. They bought like however many, ten of my books for Christmas to give them out as gifts, and they brought me into the office. They thanked me for being such a good resident and you know speaking about you know the Ryman at you know the Chamber of Commerce and on NPR and whatever. I always kind of make it a part of my yeah. story. And I said, I mean. I can't believe everyone in the building isn't doing it. I mean, it's the easiest thing to talk about. It's like whenever someone asks me, like, what's kind of been the hallmarks of your journey in Asheville, I'm like, besides, like, my books and my business, like, it's been my life there. I mean, I live literally in a complex of all artists. Like, there's nothing more unique than that. Is that the only place you've lived since you've been here? You know, I as long like, as I've known you, I feel like you've lived there, right? Yeah. So my first year, I uh, bounced around a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, you Good know, for you. So this is my kinda, first year too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, moved here with, um, you know, my uh, boyfriend, and after we broke up, I lived um, in two different places. Yeah. So I had three apartments in the first year, but I, I knew I really wanted to live in the Ryman, and actually, I always love telling this story because it's like. I am big into manifesting stuff, and I think if you know what you want and you're willing to like go after it, usually you get it if yeah. it's right and yeah. meant to be. That's so right. I remember my roommate at the time, she told me about the Ryman Lofts, and she said, I think you would love living there. It's in this up and coming neighborhood, it's downtown, you wouldn't need a car. And I thought, that's awesome. So I put in my application, and then once a month, every month, for eight months, I would call them. And I would just say, hey, I'm Lily, I really want to live there, keep me in mind. And I had a really crappy apartment situation where I was like at my wit's end. And one day out of nowhere, they called me and said, can you move in next week? And I jumped at it. And so ever since then. Ever I mean, since then. Yeah, and so it's been five and a half years. A lot of the buildings turned over, but it's still, we have like the kind of original gangsters. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. It's just been great. And it's Oh, like, that's interesting. So, so. For the OGs in the in the building, I mean, are, are do y'all like are y'all mentors in any way to the to the new folks who move in? Like like, it, I mean, is there any sort of community sort of elder aspect to to your role there now, kind having of. been there for years? Yeah, well, you know, it's cute actually. I so there's this guy on my floor, and I remember I you know one day I was sitting outside and I said, hey, what's your name? I've seen you a couple times. Like I'm Lily, and he looks at me and he goes, what's your last name? And I told him, and he said. I have your book. He was like, I love you. And I was like, oh. And so I thought, well, that's kind of funny because I guess like, yeah, if you're not walking around screaming what you do and I'm kind of more like very keep to myself. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was kind of what I found out. Like a couple of the other people in the building, I guess, had bought my first book and they sort of all like came out of the woodwork and were like, hey, you know, if you ever want to hang out. Yeah. Like, but yeah, I, I think I, I try to actively like reach out to the new people and make sure that they, you know, like know the we're all there if they need anything. Yeah. And, um, and it's just an amazing community. I mean, whenever I read studies about how, like, the world is 
increasingly lonelier. I think a lot about my building because, for example, Monday I got back in town from a couple days in Florida. I reached out to my neighbor Nelson. I said, are you going grocery shopping this week? And he said, I'm at Kroger right now. What do you want? And he picks me up like a bag full of stuff. That's and I'm amazing. Like, that is so nice and such like a gift and like literally that like took the stress down by like 20%. That's amazing. You know what I mean? That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And like, I just wish that for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. You know, sometimes like I wish I could go back, um, not re like I, w I would never want to go back to when I was younger, but I wish that I could experience some of the more communal aspects of being younger um, mm -hmm. that I've traded in when I, I don't know, had kids and decided to have a family and like, you know, be in a house. Mm -hmm. um, but th there are some really cool aspects of that. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's funny, I'm at, like, an interesting point in my life where it's, like, I'm 31, I'm not married, I'm single, like, you know, I'm very social, um, I've always had a lot of friends, I'm kind of, like, a party girl, and it's, like, I like hanging out. Yeah. And, you know, and so it's, like, I yeah. just sort of thought the other day, I guess I went to Florida over the weekend to visit my best friends and go to an art festival, yeah. and, like... I'm just going to embrace it. Like, I think for, like, the last couple of years, especially being in the South, and, again, people here get married much younger. What are you supposed to be doing by now? I that yeah, whole thing. and I felt a little weird, and then I finally thought, no, this is great. And, you know, it's like you're getting this extra, like, five to 20 years or whatever, maybe 100 years, where you get to just, like, kind of get that communal feeling that a lot of people, I think, look trade back in. and miss. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You trade it in for yeah. that whole, like... Okay, we're gonna be together, and, and 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 you know, and I'll tell you, like you spend a lot of time trying to find ways back to it. You know what I mean? Like, like, right. I, like I, I think Rachel and I have 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 really gotten to a point where we've figured out it's really, really important to us to have that. And we know, even though it means some weeks we're gonna be run ragged, and sometimes we're gonna be really tired. Like we've we've done a good job so far this year of like going to friends' birthday parties, inviting people over for dinner, like, just, you know, doing all, like, saying yes yeah. to to um, social opportunities with people that we care about, just to make sure, like, we can look up at each other and say, we have community. Like, it's not just the two of us sitting in this house, you know, yeah. like, wondering what the hell are we doing with our lives. Like, no, we have community. We have people that we, that we love, that we think about, that we spend time with, that we, you, you know, so... I, th I think there are ways to do it, but it, it, it takes conscious effort. Like, it's not a, like, when, when you go to that side, I mean, I, I don't know how true this is for women. Again, I don't, I don't know. But one thing I can say for guys, and I talk to my guy friends about this, I've, I've got two groups of guy friends, um, one from college and then one from here, where we both, we, we have, both these groups, we have group me uh, groups, mm -hmm. you know, um, and we talk every day on these groups, right? Mm -hmm. And, um... And that talking leads to hangs, mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean? It, you know, whether it's lunches, breakfasts, weekend trips, trips to Miami, whatever, right? Um, it's it's that constant conversation that does it. And, you know, like, we'll, we'll get on each other's case or if somebody's being, you know, quiet, like, text them and say, hey, man, what are you, what are you doing? You okay? Mm -hmm. Because, like, it, like, I know that men who get into the, you know, okay, I'm a man, I'm in a relationship, I've got children, and I'm working, like, when that is the slate the first thing to go is community. That's oh, the first yeah. thing to go. You know what I mean? And, and, like, you don't realize how how connected community is to your well-being. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Until, like, you don't have it. And they're like, why the fuck am I depressed? Why am I, you know, why do I feel like, like, life doesn't mean anything? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's because of that lack of community, you know? Yeah, and I'm the kind of person, it sounds like you're the same, where I need a lot of different things to, like, stimulate me. Like, even when I've been in, you know, long-term relationships, like, I always needed, like, friends and really close to my family. And I had an interesting last year, um, so my, not to turn the conversation to a downer by any means, but yeah, my No, best, I mean, it's whatever. Yeah, but my best friend passed away, and so, you know, I really, like, took a step back, and I was like... You know, it's funny, it's like into my careers I am, like, I think I'm more into, like, my friends and my family yeah. and, like, my, like, self, yeah. you know, and not, yeah. not, like, in a narcissistic way, but, like, I, a self same love as you, way. I started journaling every morning, it was, I, that's why when you said about documenting your life, I was like, you and I, Marcus, maybe you and I and Rachel will be, like, buds, <laughs> but same wavelengths, so, yeah. 
I remember I was like, whoa. I mean, and you know, I thought, okay, yeah, like, I'm so happy that he and I always made our friendship a priority. And, yeah. like, I've always really, like, tried to prioritize my family and it just... Like myself, like my like sense of self, and I, yep. I just see so many of my friends where they're just in this like rat race to like get to wherever they're going, and it's funny because the second I took a step back and I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Like yep. I'd rather make less money. I'd rather like wait tables and actually like have close friendships. The jobs started coming in. I mean, like how it always is. And funny how that works. Yeah, and so funny how that works. I thought, you know, I think it happens when you realign your priorities and your heart's in the right place. And unfortunately, I think you know his passing, like that, had to kind of snap me back into it. Yeah. But I would say that was the best thing about it. You know. Yeah, death has a way of doing that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but I think maybe it's also like. I have a lot of older friends, and, you know, they would tell me, they would be like, get it together now, don't yeah. be like most of us who, like, at 50 had this, like, rude awakening where we were like, oh, we need to, like, get back to who we are. Yes. You know? Yes. But it's hard. I mean, it, it, it's, it's like you're constantly fighting against everything the world stands for. Yeah, and if you haven't, it's like everything else, right? If you haven't, I mean, I think this is where artists do have an advantage, um, if you haven't been working that muscle of individuality, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and and like and respecting your yourself mm -hmm. in the face of all the things the world might try to influence you to be, mm -hmm. it gets harder over time. You know, every day that you sort of acquiesce to the system, mm -hmm. you know, I, th I think one of the reasons why why it has been okay for me, I, I like like this is this is why I I changed my whole like you know. I talk about entrepreneurship. This is why I changed it to creative power because I realized entrepreneurship, like that's my canvas, if you will, and it's not even my only canvas, but it is, it is, it's, it's the framework within which I've been creative for the last two decades, mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean? Like that's what, but it's about creativity. It's, yeah. it's about, I used entrepreneurship as a way to be myself, mm -hmm. to be more fully me. And now that I sort of was like getting that itch like, hey, you need to go even deeper there, it just wasn't that big of a leap. You know what I mean? Because I've been, I've been bucking the system for 20 years now. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Whereas I think people who are like doing all the things that society is telling them, when they do have, I mean, I, I think a lot of this is where midlife crisis comes from, you know? It's, it's this sense, of, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, because you bring up people like, you know, in your 50s, your older friends who are like, hey, don't wait until I like, I mean, I see a lot of that now. Sure. People who like are quietly really, really struggling. Yes. Oh yeah. Really, yeah. really struggling with like the decisions they've made. Like, yeah, it's hard. Oh it's hard. yeah. I it's mean, hard. I would say you know, like I mentioned, I'm doing this extensive corporate project now. You know, at where I'm doing three to five interviews a day. I mean, and it's. Uh, it's interesting because I would say about one, it, it seems to be like one in every ten interviews, someone will like drop a bomb on me, you know, and never anything like inappropriate, I mean, but just like get very real, yeah. and it's like a great gift, yeah. it's like, it's always, and it'll kind of almost like, I mean like anyone, I can go on kind of autopilot mode, you know, and yeah. it'll kind of snap me out of it, and I'm like, oh wow, this person is like really sharing something with you, and that's generally what it is, it's generally like... A guy said it to me the other day, he had worked in the um, public sector for a long time, public servant, yep. very proud of that, uh, great admiration for that work, obviously. Now he's in private, and he said it's it's different, you know, he said it's it's, it's not me. <laughs> he said, I'll be real. Yeah. You know, he said the only reason I did it was because my wife was on my case, and, you know, I had to pay for my daughter to go to school, and he said, thank you for letting me share that with you. He said, I've made peace with it, but... Yes, I was happier when I was working for the government. Wow. And I thought, you know, I mean, I had another person wow. tell me something very similar. And I thought, everyone's got their struggles and everyone needs someone to talk to. And so it's interesting because a lot of these interviews are on the phone. I don't even think they know what I look like unless they go to my website. But I thought, 
they feel comfortable sharing with me. Yeah. And, you know, and I obviously, like, am a safe space to do that. Okay, so... Is that interesting? It is interesting. You you posted on Instagram today um, a quote from Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. Um, so... I found the Anthony Bourdain passing to be far harder for me than I thought it was ever going to be. Mm-hmm. A lot of people said that. I found it to be, like, really, re- like, truly, and I don't get depressed easily. Yeah. Depressing. Like losing like, a friend. Like, yes, yeah. yes, yes, like depressing. And this is sort of what I wanted to ask, because, like, sure. as you started talking about, you know... How, how many conversations you're having a day mm-hmm. and like that someone will drop a bomb on you I mean it just sort of felt like there's a there's a little bit of a parallel between what you do and, and a therapist I mean you're not sort of on a repeat deal with people but you are having conversations with people and you know depending on the level of trust that they feel with you and that, that connection like they might share something that energetically is now with you. Yeah. So, like, how do you... Why did I bring up Anthony Bourdain? Because I felt like he was going around the world, and I felt like part of... Look, this is just my speculation, right? But, I mean, you know, you, you look at, at, like... You look at the, at, the, at the things that he was a part of. Like, he wasn't just going around eating food. Like, he was a part of things that were going on in the Middle East and Russia that were, like, dealing with political... Like, I mean... Yeah. P- people who ended up being assassinated by the, those governments. I mean, were, were people who he had relationships with. You know what I'm saying? And so, I I can't imagine what that must have been like for him. Like, just you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So so yeah. So, so, I'm, so I'm sort of just wondering, like, you know, how? Like, is it fine for you? Do you just like? Does it? Like, does nothing really penetrate, or does it really ever? What's that like? Um, yeah, no, it was interesting. I am kind of like a therapist, and especially, you know, I've worked on several memoir projects where I would um, interview the person over and over and over again, I mean, which is pretty intense, and the one person I did it with, she said that she felt more comfortable talking to me than her therapist, and she said, I don't know how you don't go crazy, like, the stuff people tell you. I don't know. I, I'm able, I'm kind of detached in a way, mm-hmm. like as sensitive as a person I am and as much of a softy. Like I, I sense that about yeah. you. I, I sense that about yeah. you. You can get distant pretty quick. Yeah. I, I, and like in yourself. Yeah. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I can of, see that. I can kind of detach. and Like I, in the moment. I Like sometimes I'll talk to you and I'll feel like, where the fuck did you go? Seriously. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, but, yeah. Then, but then you'll come back and I'll be like, oh, okay, there she is. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But, yeah, like, ser- seriously, like, yeah. I'm glad I could just tell you that. No, no, that's interesting. Yeah. It is true. Um, yeah, I've definitely been told that. Um, I think you have to, to, like, kind of protect yourself. And then also to realize, like, someone said it to me once. They said everyone's stuff is their stuff, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, whatever someone's going through, it's like, that I'm happy they shared it with me, but, like, that's their thing, yeah. you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And I think, uh just accepting that and then accepting like my stuff's my stuff like you're able to like walk away from it right easily right you know what I mean yeah but yeah maybe he did feel the weight of the world on his shoulders I don't know I I, I can't even pretend to understand why uh why he took his life um but yeah I just you know I was just thinking about the fact that you were having all these conversations and then you posted it and you know, anytime I think about him, like, it makes my heart heavy, you know, and I don't even know why, like, that's the thing, like, I don't know why, like, in particular, his mm-hmm. passing, you know, there's been lots of people, you know, in recent history that, you know, I was fond of as a fan or, you know, something like that, but there's something about his in particular that's just like, ugh, that, that, that one was kind of hard. I think his great curiosity for people was really special. I mean, that's something I think about a lot, because I mean, like, it's true. I mean, I am amazed at how rare it is for some, and you have that as well, like, someone to be really curious about people, and that's what I think it is when people open up to me. It's like, yes, like, I can be kind of detached. I think I can even be kind of, like cold sometimes, but I'm always curious. Yeah. And so, and so if yeah. you are curious, 
people will tell you everything. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's amazing. And, <laughs> and he was like that. I mean, if you read that book, Kitchen Confidential, I mean, he wasn't always, like, a super nice person. No, and, no, like, no, And even no. people say to me all the time, they're like, oh, you must be so non-judgmental. I'm like, no, I have my judgments. It's like, and I definitely have my dark side, and I'm very in touch with it. But... I am very curious, and if you look at someone and they can tell you're like hanging on every word, they will keep talking. So, okay, I think that's one of the, I, I think you just clued in on one of the reasons why I like him so much. Yeah. Um, his shadow side was very pronounced. Yeah. And not something he ever hid. No. And I love that. Like, I'm the same that, way. I just, yeah. I just, you know. Uh, that that is truly a refreshing thing. Yeah. That is truly a refreshing thing. Like somebody who, yeah. Well, and not just talked about it, like because you can talk about stuff you've been through, like drugs and whatever. Yeah. Um, but he was very in touch with like the grim sides of life, and I yes. am as well. I mean, like when I mentioned like my best friend died last year. I mean, it was a heroin overdose. Yeah. And, I mean. And, you know, I posted about it a little bit on social media. I thought, I'm very comfortable talking about this because because the reality is I've been around a lot of addicts and this exists. I mean, we're in, like, a total epidemic right now. Um, and, you know, I'm not afraid to talk about tough stuff. And I do think people are attracted to that. Yes. I mean, where it's just kind of like, yeah, lay it on me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's not going to shock me. Yeah. Yeah. And also being comfortable with, like, your own dark sides. Because that does make you less judgmental. It, like, if you've seen the worst parts of yourself, it's kind of hard to... Like, I find it harder to judge people. I don't have it in me. Yeah. I, I, like, like legit, I, I'm totally uncomfortable judging people. Completely. I, Completely and utterly uncomfortable judging people. Because I know me. I'm like, uh-uh, dude. <laughs> you have... No moral authority at all. And, I, look, and, and by yeah. the way, I also don't overly judge myself. Like, I don't think I'm, like, a bad person. But I just know I don't know what's going on with people. And I know people don't know what's going on with me. You right. know what I'm saying? And so, like, I'm very happy with where I am right now. I think I'm in a very healthy place. And I'm, you know, like, I, I, I think my expression of, a, of myself in the world and how I show up in the world is, like, I'm proud of it. You know what I'm saying? It's like what I want. It's I'm very proud of it through and through. You know what I mean? It feels very clear right now. But it hasn't always been that way. You know, it really it hasn't. And it's like, yeah, you know, like I do. I I mean, I I still make judgments, and then I try really hard to, you know, pull them back because um, same thing because I've done stuff I'm not proud of, like everyone and. As much as I think I'm a really good person, I mean, I have shitty qualities too. And it's right, just like, right. you know, I mean, it, but this is why it's interesting. So, you know, obviously I spent a lot of time in the UK uh, the year before last. And I do still work with a British therapist, not a lot, but I would say once a month, because I really relate to the Brits in a lot of ways. Mm. They are kind of. You know, uh, well, they're realists, and they're sort of, like, into the dark side of life. I mean, look at all, like, Monty Python and all that fucked up shit, and it's just, like, you know, and so anyway, she, she will always say that. They got bombed to shit. Yes, exactly. Like. Exactly. The, the Congress, yeah. The, 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 the collective yeah. memory of their society. Right. Is, oh, it can go down. Oh, yeah. See, this is a thing America doesn't really have, right? This is a thing we, we lack here. We don't, we don't have a collective memory outside of things like 9-11 and Oklahoma City, which are incidents. They're not, they're not massive, like, disruptive, life-altering, generation-altering events. They're not. They're not. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I had, in 9-11, I had seven people that I know. One family member, a bunch of people from, from school. I mean, kids who kids who were on my football line when I was a senior. They were juniors and, and, and sophomores under me on my line. I, I, I ran the football line. Passed away in 9-11. I mean, it was altering for me. Sure. But there were so many people in America who, other than it being a symbol, weren't touched by that. You, 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 you yeah. feel what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. That's what I mean. Cool. Like, 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 I mean, it, it touched me personally. But, like, London... Nah, man. Oh, I, like, I, I absolutely <laughs> agree. 
like, like, is, like that's real. Yeah, I think we don't look enough at the history, <laughs> and I think it can definitely shape, I mean, the way people think for generations. And, for um, generations, yes. You know, I, I, yes. I, I always liked how they kind of looked at stuff, you know, um, from the perspective of, like, my, like my therapist said, humans are both good and bad, light and dark, you know, I mean, and I think that that is a healthy way versus, I, I do find Americans, it's interesting, especially with the whole self-help wave, yeah, it's like, yeah, 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 you yeah. know, it, it seems like we're all striving for like some sort of like perfection, and it's but like... But who's perfection? That's the thing that I, like I don't mind if you're striving for something, but whose perfection is it? Yeah. According, right. according to who? Whoever's on Oprah's, you know, book yeah, list or yeah, whatever. Yeah, see, that's you know? the bullshit. Yeah, yeah, totally. that's the bullshit right there. Like, you know, if it's yours, if it's your own ideal for yourself that that you genuinely came up with, that's great. Right. That's great. Yes. Yes. No, definitely. Yeah, and it, it's like we're constantly. Um, we're also comparing nation. That was something that, you know, and, and again, I mean, I, I don't know if they don't do that as much in the UK. I didn't observe it as much. But that is something, I guess, that, like, if we're talking about modern society, that yeah. kind of bothers me. Is like, it seems like with social media and, like, just kind of the way our mindsets have changed in recent years, it's like we compare ourselves more to other people than ever. But a lot of times it's to total strangers, so who cares? And really, I mean, I think the happiest people are the ones that are just kind of doing their own thing. And the most successful, usually. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. I think it's the only magic that that exists anymore. I mean, I, I, I don't even want to get started. How are we doing on time here? Yeah, we're doing good. I don't even want to get started on, like, how... I don't think we understand how disruptive the internet has really been. Like, we use the word disruption, but I don't think we really... I, I don't think we have figured out a way to really contextualize how much the world has utterly changed in the last 20 years since the internet's become a thing. Right. And, um, you know, 25 years. And uh, I think it has both made it, cl made it clear and also made it very murky what's what's going to be valued in the future, right? I, I think the murkiness is the uncertainty because things replace other things so quickly, right? Like, things don't have staying power anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like thing, it, it could even be, like, this high, but, you know, like, right now Facebook is under attack. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? And, like, who knows, like, how strong they're going to be in five years. I mean, really, because they're, they're getting attacked pretty aggressively, right? Sure, sure. Um, but... I, I think the clarity of, of this era is, like, the brilliance of each one of us as an individual. Like, I feel like they sort of lied to us when we were younger, when they said, you know, and maybe, they, maybe this didn't happen in your generation, but, like, where they were like, you know, you're not a snowflake. I'm like, no, actually, I am a fucking snowflake. Like, like Marcus Whitney, this incarnation of him in the world, at least so far that I've seen, one of one, baby. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Like, that's the magic. Yeah. That's the magic, the one of one. That's it. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't, I don't, I have not encountered another Lily. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you're, you're one of one. And the more you lean into that shit, you're gonna have more and more success. And, and just whatever that truth is for you, right? It has empowered people in that way, and I do like that. It's definitely like given people, I think, a platform to showcase their individuality. And yes, no, I mean that's what I love about my interviews. I mean, I always say that. I mean, at this point, it's well over a thousand that I've done and it's like I've never met the same person twice that's why I think people are so interesting yeah the one thing I don't like about the internet is I think it's made people's attention span much more fragmented no question and you know no it's like very hard for me to keep people's attention unless I'm interviewing them because then people love to talk about themselves. But it was like, I was on a date like last week with this guy I've been kind of hanging out with who's a sweetheart, but I mean like, you know, we're shooting pool, which first of all, like, I'm into pool. I like playing pool. Like, I have to concentrate to play pool. Yeah. And so I don't even think I brought my phone in the place. And he, like, every time I look over, is, like, texting his, like, roommate or his friends or whatever. And I'm just like, dude, what are you doing? I mean, we see each other, like, once a week for two hours. What the hell is so important? Nothing. Nothing could be that important. Nothing. Unless someone's dying. I mean, seriously. And, but I think that's that mentality. It's like, ooh, who needs me? 
and me personally... We've been trained by it, and there's no question. We've been trained by it to behave in ways that, like, we did... We didn't behave before because we couldn't behave before. And guess what? Humanity lived all those years just fine before we all had instant access to each other. It's like, it's not true that we need instant access to each other. No. Not true. No, no. And it, it, it's the way you were told, right? It's wired us to instant access, constant communication, um, and to have to respond at like rapid fire. And it's like really interesting because someone like you and I, we could go a year without seeing each other and we could have a two hour conversation. Totally. And we could feel like probably closer than I do to people I talk to all the time because it's more real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. So I, I now, I get it. I mean, because I've been doing a lot of, I'm calling them conversations versus interviews because I, I, I don't know that I would qualify what I'm doing as an interview, and I don't even think that's what I want it to be, but I will agree that uh, just creating this space and the purpose of, like, like okay, I'm going to document it, so, like, I, I can't touch it. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. I mean, yeah. like, I've had... I, I, I'm somewhere in between 15 and 20 conversations now that's with great. people who, obviously, I want to have conversations with, mm -hmm. And they've been hour long conversations, and they've been awesome. That's awesome. You know what I mean? And I'm like, wow! I'm so and I and I've done it basically in the month of January. That's amazing. Right? How and, are you picking people? Like, what's the criteria? I mean, they're my friends. Yeah. I'm picking my friends. Yeah. Like honestly, like like I don't I don't give a shit if you don't like it. Like, I don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, sure. I have cool friends. Mm -hmm. I'm picking my friends. I'm having conversations with my friends. That's it. Like at some point I'll run out, mm -hmm. but. You know, That's more so real. far, so far it's been people I actually know. No, I love it. I think it's great. I mean, it's very, it's a good exercise to, um, that's the one thing I love about acting is the, um, the lack of self-consciousness you have to have to have a camera on you. Mm, and thank yeah. God I am not that self-conscious. Right. Um, I don't know why, uh, but I'm very comfortable, like, in front of the camera. I like how I look, but, like... You really do. I mean, you have to just go into it and be like, I don't care. I'm not even going to think about, like, how I look from this angle or how do I sound? Does my voice sound weird? Do I sound nasally? I mean, whatever. And the less self-conscious you are, that's why a lot of the great supermodels were so sexy. Yeah. They were like, yeah. you know, a little string bean because they just didn't give a fuck. That's what it is. Yeah. And you got and you got the sense that they really loved themselves. I mean, that's what's sexy, right? You know what I mean? Like self-conscious. <laughs> self being self-conscious is not it's just not that sexy. It's just not. Yeah. It's not, right? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, to to be comfortable in your own skin 100%. Is, is, yeah. Is, right? And to love your own skin. Yes. Which I because, because you signal to others my skin is to be loved. Yes. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, like that's what you communicate, oh, and yeah. when you don't communicate that, you're com you're not communicating that, right? You know what I mean? Like you're communicating something different. It is interesting though because I will say this: um, you realize one how rare it is once you do feel that, like that comfortable in your own skin, and how intimidating people find it. It's why people are celebrities are like that. Like I remember when I was in London, I was. Uh, like a nanny slash PA to the biggest actor in the UK, Dominic West. And he is such a nice guy. I just loved working for him and his wife. And, I, yeah, I remember the first day he walked in the living room, and I just thought, oh, I want to work for him. He's awesome. Like, he was just nice as can be. But, you know, he was, like, a lot of the celebrities I've worked for or become friends with. Like, he was he had a presence. Presence. I mean, and, you know, he sat right down, and he said... Nice to meet you. I'm Dominic. Do you have experience with kids? I said, not really. He said, thanks for being honest. You're hired. I said, no problem. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I said, he said, do you even like kids? And I said, not really. And he said, do you want a cup of tea? And so he and I kind of like, you know, became cordial and would chat. And, yeah, yeah, and he yeah. always said that. He said, I just thought, oh, funny American girl who like obviously just... <laughs> It's like, I'm here, I want my 14 pounds an hour. And yeah, right. So, yeah, it's weird because, like, then you start meeting all sorts of other, like, comfortable in their own skin people. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, can I use what you just said as a segue into something else? Oh, that yeah. I, 
Okay, here's another thing that I really, really admire about you, and I wish more people did. Um, and I know, I like, I I know this in my gut. I I could, I could and would and would do it. You'll work any job. Oh yeah. Like, oh god, yeah. Like you, totally. This you don't have any pride about that shit. You're just like, oh, it's a job. Oh god. Yeah, of and, and and you're not like, oh, I don't want you to see me here because I'm really Lily the interviewer or whatever the fuck. You're like, oh yeah, hey, great to see you. I'm like doing this now or I'm doing that. But like, you're not. It's not what you are. It's like something you're doing to like make money. I like. <laughs> saw you, like, the, a month after I wrapped the HCA book. I yeah. mean, I got, you know, the, their 50th anniversary book at age 30. Everyone said, oh, my God, you hit the jackpot. You're set for life. The next month, I was back working at the 404 Kitchen. I started where I called up Matt Bullis, the owner, and, and who's a friend. And I said, hey, I need my old job back. I get 14 bucks an hour. Like, I'm in between book jobs. He was like, we'd love to have you, you know? And I, same thing. It's, it's always like a... I love that so much. Well, Man, I love that. Because you gotta own it. You gotta own it. And I, the first day I went in, I thought, you know, I had just gotten flown all around the country for two months. I was like the rock star writer. I had just made more money than I'd ever made. But, you know, one, I couldn't afford to not work for the next six months. And two, who the hell wants to sit around? And I thought, own it. Go in there. Look great. Wear your nicest dress. Smile. Network. I mean, I ran into you, which was great. I mean, and just, you know, it's just a job. And then it was like, I think I did that in Silo for five months, maybe, which was also great. I yeah. loved working there. Yeah. I ran into your wife, Rachel, there. It was like fun. And then I get a call from Gresham Smith, and they're like, hey, you want seven months worth of work? I'm like, great. Hey, two weeks notice, back to doing B- my back thing. Back to doing your thing. Love it. Love you know? it. Love it. And people Love get it. so, like, embarrassed about that stuff. And me, personally, I find it sexy when people like to work. Right? Yes. I mean, you find yes. your wife sexy because she's a badass. Work. Yes. Work. <laughs> Fucking work. Like, that's what I want. I want I want people who like to work around me. I like work. I want you to like work. That's, like, like that's important. Yes. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. I just had I just had to get that out because, by the way, I know you know this, but but that was so interesting that that uh, you know, Amazon was uh, having dinner at four or four that night. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't know that. No. Did you, you didn't know that's what I was there for. No. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. So that dinner was uh, was Amazon and the governor and the mayor. Wow! Oh, like brokering the deal. To well, bring them well, here. not brokering, but more like, uh, more, more like, uh, roadshow, you know, in, in Nashville, sort of pulling together a couple of people to talk to Amazon's team of people. That, wow. That's that's what that was that night. Amazing. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. 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 See, that's the other thing I always tell people about, like the part-time jobs. It's like. You find out amazing stuff. Yeah. And I never go, I literally will go in there and I'll be like looking at the books. I'm like, okay, all right, the, like, gotta like see these people, whatever. I take it very seriously when I'm there. Yeah. But then it's like, I'll run into someone like you, or like you'll like find out that like someone you've been wanting to meet is having dinner and they want to talk to you, or whatever. I mean, it's just, there. people get so myopic about jobs. And if you can take a step back, a lot of times they're a freaking gold mine. Seriously, even my little like nanny job in London. I mean, I always think that's such a great story to tell. It is a great story. And I made a couple hundred pounds. It was awesome. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just, I wanted to get that in because like it's a, you know, it's a superpower if you just don't give a shit. About that stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like you know, you think about the number of opportunities that people like you know, and the anxiety and all the stuff, and you're just like, hey, Matt, I need to, I need to get back, and you know, and then. Okay, two weeks. I mean, it's just I, I I just think that's refreshing, like super refreshing. I think it also it keeps you humble. It um, which is important. Which is important. I think it keeps your especially in the service industry will keep your social skills like way sharp because you have to talk to so many different kinds of people. And to be honest with you, I mean, it's hysterical. I actually reached out to Silo last week and I said I'm looking to make some extra money. If you guys have some shifts, I'll work on the weekends. They're like, oh, I'd love to have you back. And I thought. I think it just, um, it teaches you to be very adaptable in life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And again, yes, to just realize, like, 
no one's ever thinking about you. Everyone's just thinking about themselves. Yes. Like, no one ever saw me in a job and was like, oh, loser, loser, whatever. I right. mean, no. Right. If no. anything, they were like, oh, bro, good to see you, you know? And I'm like, hell yeah. So, yeah. Loser, loser, whatever. Uh, that was good. Yeah. That was good. That was good. <laughs> We um, did it too. I mean, service industry veterans. Look, I'm not even kidding. Sometimes I really like. Wanna, Miss it. Wanna, I, 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 I seriously really like. I, I'm, I might, I might go. I might, I might start picking up shifts somewhere. I like seriously. It's fun. It's fun. You get cash in your pocket yeah. and in your social skills. Yeah, and you can just be your wacky self. You don't ever have to like hold you, that back. And you get free meals. And you get free meals. And you get the free meals. Free meals and you get best. free meals. And free drinks. And You're not drinking right I'm, now, but I like having a cocktail. Come on, it's like, come on. Oh, I, I love, and it's social. It's like we go back to, like, this comes full circle. Like, the community thing, I always love. You're on your feet. You're on your feet. I always loved getting off work, put your apron, or last was I was hosting, take my t-shirt off, put on something else, and, like, sit at the bar and have my glass of wine for a walk home. That is nice. You know? And it's like, you ask your coworkers, like, how was your night? Oh, yeah, Mr. Blah 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 came in and, you know, stiffed me again. And it's like, it's just a very real, honest environment. Yep. Yep. I don't miss getting stiffed. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I, no, that's why I went back to host. Yeah. And you yeah. Know yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The stiffing piece is not fun. Mm -hmm. That piece was hard. That piece was hard. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> I, this is a cool format. I yeah, 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 yeah. Good catching up. This is a great conversation. This yeah, awesome. yeah. This was awesome. Totally. Um, okay, so what do you have going on th this this year? This year, I am working um, with Gresham Smith, which is a great company, global architecture firm. I am rewriting um, literally hundreds of their bios, so those will be on their That's website. Amazing. Thank you. Um, and included in their CVs and project proposals, and then... Beyond that, I don't know. Right now, I'm talking to several different companies and even one city about possibly doing a book for them. Okay. So, um, we'll see. And then, I really want to do more acting. And that's, like, my new passion. Okay. And I'm just, like, I don't know. It's it's fun. And it's, like, I'm not taking it too... I'm taking it seriously, uh, but not too seriously. Uh, film only or stage and film? I like doing film. Film. Yeah. Film. Okay. Yeah, I'm into okay. film. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's fun. I, I, I think it works better. Like, think about my writing. Like, yeah. I do, like, short kind of writing. Yep. So films, like, scenes. Yep. I, I, doing a play, I think, like, God bless those people. It's, like, too much more. It's a marathon. Them. Yeah. It is a marathon. A film right. is, a, a, a stage play is a marathon. Definitely. Film is, e I can wrap my head around breaking stuff up in parts. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Yeah, no, I love it, though. It's, it's, it's a new way to be creative and empathetic. Okay, so if you need a book written, if you need bios written, or if you're casting for a film, <laughs> you need to hire Lily. Okay, thank you. You're the best. Thank you.